coming up on the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. To focus on fat loss, we don't really talk about restricting calories or um, tracking all of these different macros, just simply prioritizing protein, decreasing added carbs and fats. It is almost an evolution of the keto style of eating. A lot of us came from a low carb, high fat style of eating. Mm -hmm. It just prioritizes protein a bit more than that style would mm -hmm. and reduces added fats a bit. So rather than adding, you know, a bunch of macadamia nuts or a bunch of grass fed butter to your food or avocados, we would say, you know, eat more pasture raised eggs, eat more grass fed beef, eat more wild caught salmon. So really focusing on the protein mineral side of things. And then the third aspect would be just a simple, simple um, high intensity body weight training program that takes 15 minutes a day, one set to failure on a pushing movement, a pulling movement, and a leg movement. Hello, and welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I'm Brian Grin, and I'm here to give you actionable tips to get your body back to what it once was five, 10, even 15 years ago. Each week, I'll give you an in-depth interview with a health expert from around the world to cut through the fluff and get you long-term sustainable results. This week, I interviewed William Schufel. He's an actor, model, speaker, and health nutrition advocate. He is most notably recognized as Brody, the Red Ranger from Nickelodeon's Power Rangers. He was once an all-in strict vegan, and he's now a proponent of the ketogenic and the carnivore diet. He also co-authored the PE Diet Book. We'll dive into that, also get into goal setting, his morning ritual, principles to lose body fat, his daily eating habits, and even his favorite books. We'll also get into the 21-day carnivore shred challenge, also his daily protein requirements, and lastly, his one tip to get your body back to what it once was. So this is a great episode, a lot of awesome information, and I hope you enjoy it, and thanks a lot for listening. All right. Well, welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. Uh, my guest today is William Schufelt, and uh, he's out of uh, Orange County, in California, and I'm excited to have him on. Um, he's done a lot. I, I could spend probably 15 minutes talking about everything he's done, but I'll just say he's an actor, a rapper, an author. He's got a song I just listened to. He's got a challenge out there. Uh, so we have a lot of great things that we're going to talk about today. And uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. We were linked up through uh, my good friend, Brad Kearns. So anybody that, you know, Brad wants me to talk to, I will talk to because Brad's an awesome dude. <laughs> well, yeah. And, uh, and listening to all the things that you have out there, whether, you know, I know you did, you had a podcast going for a little while. I, I, I felt like we have a lot in common just to, in just the way we think and we live our lives. So I'm excited to have you on. Um, and I guess we could start with sort of, um, you know, your background. I know you, you start out with acting and then sort of grew from there. Yeah. Um, let's see background. Do, do we want to take it back to <laughs> just a, being a, a wee young lad in Modesto or, or maybe I guess let's, let's maybe save people the details and let's just go to, um, I, I studied economics in college. I went to UC San Diego for that. And, uh, you know, I, I did three years of that. I did a lot of different internships while I was there. I was president of our economic society and I got heavily involved, but I became super aware of the fact that I didn't like the direction my life was headed in. I, I could see, you know, I, I would be able to join, you know, some, some great company and, and kind of work my way through the ranks mm -hmm. um, and join corporate America, or I could even go like the more academic route with that and try to become a professor or go for a master's degree or a PhD in economics. And I just kind of looked at a lot of those different options. Um, I was also doing like model UN and, and mock trial and some of those things. So looking at what it would be like if I pursued a legal career or something in public service. And I didn't like none of it. <laughs> um, I, I had a good time. Like I, I always really pushed myself on all of those things, but um, th there just came a point where I was like, okay, I have one year of college left. I'm still young enough that I could do anything that I, I want to at this point. I could kind of change direction. Um, and I really did some soul searching before that last year of college. And I, I did a lot of goal setting. I was reading heavily, you know, a lot of the personal development books Right. And realized that acting was something that I had been passionate about since I was a kid. 
had just always written off because it just didn't seem likely. It didn't seem like a realistic possibility, which I think a, a lot of us do that. A lot of us have, you know, in the ideal world, we would do X, Y, and Z, but we won't do that because we're too, you know, born in the wrong place or we're too short, we're too tall, we're the wrong ethnicity, blah, blah, blah. So mm. um, yeah, I, I just sort of wrote it off. And once I, once I started to learn how goal setting works and once I saw how effective it was in my life, I started to realize like, man, you can really kind of point and choose what it is you want to do and work backwards and create systems and routines to help get you there. So I set this goal for myself. Um, I've told the story before, but, but I set a goal for myself that in one year I wanted to book the starring role on a major TV show. And I really worked backwards from there. And by the end of the year, I had, you know, gotten an agent and I had done an independent film and some music videos and commercials. And finally, I booked the, uh, the leading role on the Power Rangers TV show. Mm -hmm. And that's when I went off to New Zealand for the next year. And we filmed 45 episodes of that, uh, two seasons of that. And it really just changed my life. And I, I also had a health journey that was sort of parallel to all of that but right. I'll, I'll cut it off there because we're <laughs> i'm already running a bit long <laughs> no that's good i know that was a, a very general question you could probably go on anywhere i mean you know we talk about goal setting goal setting i think it's something that even myself have, have talked about and i've done it in the past um how do you do you set goals um every month you know how do you do it and how far out do you do it yeah, so th that's that's a big scope in terms of how I could answer that. There, I have sort of a mission, like a mission for my life, and and there's there's a certain trajectory and progression and evolution that I want to see in my life in a few different fields. So that kind of maps out the course of what I want to achieve over the span of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and along with that, you know, I have goals that I want to achieve in the next five years some things that I really want to focus on. Right. Um, and then I also usually take some time out at the beginning of each year to focus on, you know, about three to five achievable targets in professional areas, also personally. So that kind of moves me in a certain direction for that year. And then I really focus on like what's really actionable for me is setting these quarterly goals, usually like hundred day challenges that I'll do for myself. Um, and those kind of determine like, what am I sprinting towards at the moment? Um, I have like monthly challenges that I set for myself that are going to move me to those quarterly goals. And then each week I'm kind of revisiting all of that and, and mapping out my projects and how I'm going to manage my, my music and my acting projects, my social media, my, uh, 21 day carnivore shred challenge, um, you know, the, the PE diet book, which, which we're still marketing and, and getting out there. So yeah, I'll take time at the beginning of each week to just sort of review where is everything at, you know, what needs to get done this week. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like, how did I do with that monthly challenge the past week, you know? So, yeah. yeah no, I mean, I think the toughest thing is, you know, being an entrepreneur like yourself and myself sometimes is you have so many things that you want to get done and it's like you get pulled in all these different directions. And, and, I, and I actually have this tab on, on my computer. It says one thing at a time. Um, mm. Because it, at least for me, if, if I, I get pulled every direction, then, then nothing really gets done. Um, I, yeah. I, for me, I like to focus on one thing, get it done, and then move on to the next. Um, how do you mm -hmm. feel about that? I, I completely agree with that. Um, one of the most important things for me is having a daily checklist that I go through and that checklist. So there's like a morning component to it. And then there's like a work component to it. So in the morning, there is like a morning routine that yeah, I guess you could talk, call it let, a morning. Let's routine. talk about that. Cause that was actually a question. I'm a big fan of morning rituals. So what, what is your morning routine? It's long, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for me, you, you know, since we're able to set our own schedules in a sense, um, I, I really take the entire morning. I mean, from 5 a.m. to about 10 or 11, and I'm mm. building on all of the routine things I need to do. They're kind of mundane, but um, <laughs> it's, it's just funny how your cup got cut off in the background <laughs> there. Um, <okay. laughs> but 
so it, it starts 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm doing is some stuff from my mind. So it's, it's stuff like affirmations. It's, I like to write out my quarterly goals like 15 times each in, in kind of like an affirmation sense, mm -hmm. um, really to drill it into my head. And then after that, I'll make this electrolyte drink. I will head off to the gym. Um, I'll go work out usually for about 45 minutes um, lifting. And then I'll head back home, take a shower. I will meditate a bit. I will read for 10 minutes. Um, I'll also do a little bit of gratitude. And by then it's about nine o'clock, I believe. Um, and that's when I'll start working on vocal warmups and vocal training for uh, the music stuff. So that takes about an hour. And after that, then I'll usually have a little bit of like an early lunch. Um, and then after that, I'll work for about two hours on creating new music. And mm -hmm. then it's, it's about probably 1 p.m. And that's when I kind of go into the rest of my work for the day. Anything administrative or, or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, that's great that you have it laid out like that. I mean, I think it's so important. At least I have found that my mornings are so valuable. And, yeah. Um, if if you don't have a plan in the morning, at least for me, like once the afternoon comes, like you said, like for me, I try to be my most productive self in the morning, and then once mm -hmm. it gets in the afternoon, I, then maybe it's more like you said, like more administrative, more administrative things. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe things that don't use as much brain power um, than, yeah. at least for me. I know you do some creative stuff in the afternoon too. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, speaking of your song, um, I listened to that, the one that was just on YouTube um, and I wrote down the name. Oh, is that a Spanish? Is it a... Uh, yeah. Can you I've, I've, got, I don't uh, I've got about... <laughs> no, I, I've got about it? three... I have three Spanish songs out currently. Okay. Um, one of them is Enamorado, the other is right. Disfruta, the other is Buena Cosa. Um, so that's, that's kind of the genre of music that I've been working a lot in recently. Uh, reggaeton, Latin trap, stuff like that. Yeah, you said, you see, I, I'm glad you said it and I didn't say it because <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have sounded as good as that. But and, uh, uh, the Enamorado one, um, mm -hmm. I really liked it. You know, and I'm Thank not you. saying that. Or did I really liked it? Like I'm like, oh, I'll listen to this. And you know, sometimes you put on a song, you're like, yeah, you can turn it off after like 20. <laughs> I'll put myself through this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm gonna keep listening to this. This is good. I like it. Um, so, anyways, that's awesome. I, speaking of music um, and different hobbies and things, I've actually been getting into piano. So I've been learning piano over the last probably like five, six years. Um, and I know you're big into like personal growth and things like that. So that was something I wanted to do was learn an instrument. And I, I, I learned how to play piano when I was young, but then I sort of, I've taken, learning something as an adult is a completely different thing than learning something, yeah. you know, when you're forced into it, when you're like 12 years old. <laughs> yeah. That brain plasticity isn't quite the same. <laughs> it's <laughs> it takes, not the same. It takes a bit more rigidity. It, it is. And you, but you know what? You appreciate it more you sort of see how you progress more when you're older. You know, you're just not self-aware yeah. when you're younger. You don't realize you just sort of do it because you're just doing it. Um, so I've really enjoyed that process. And um, I mean, you know, I talk a lot about health and, you know, we'll talk about fasting and things like that. But I also talk about mind work. And, and I think that if, if you don't have that, your mind right, a lot of the other things won't fall into place. It's, it's hugely important. Um, and I, man, I think that, that can be a make or break component. Sometimes you really do have to train your mindset. You have to train the beliefs that you have. Um, you have to train your self-talk. All of these things are, you know, you can either accept what you were born with and go with that throughout life. Um, or you can actively seek to create a more growth oriented mindset, a more positive mindset, a more, um, you know, success oriented mindset. So all of these things, I was viewed as like everything can be improved. Everything can be changed. Everything can be uh, built and grown. Um, you ultimately have to figure out what are the most important things for you to be building and growing because you can't necessarily do everything. Some stuff you can relegate to habits and routines so you don't have to think about it. Um, some, some things will take a lot of active focus and then some things you just kind of have to push to the future when you get to it. Yeah. Is there something, is there a book or a journal that you use or that has helped you sort of sculpt like your affirmations and your, and your goal setting, or do you just do that on your own? Yeah. I, 
I've got a couple of journals. Um, I mean, this, I just, I use this just for work. It doesn't show up in my beach <laughs> background there. Yeah. And I, I've got another journal that I use um, okay. just to, just for writing, just for journaling, just for like affirmation, stuff like that. I've got one that I use um, more for like checklists and daily routines and habits. I don't necessarily use like a, a formatted journal per se. Um, I've done that in the past. Uh, I did the self journal for a while. I did um, mm -hmm. John Lee Dumas had a good journal too. Um, I used that for a little while, but yeah, I, I kind of prefer like a more free form thing where I can set it up in whatever structure I want. Yeah, I hear you. I, um, I have a journal. I don't use it enough, but like for me, my morning routine has become, um, uh, it's amazing though. What I also found is if, if you get up an hour earlier, how much of a difference that can make, um, in that morning routine. Uh, yeah. I mean, like for example, like six o'clock is typical for me. Um, and, uh, if there's a day where it's like dark and gloomy in Chicago and for some reason I sleep longer, you just like it, honestly, that half hour to hour, like let's say I'm up at six 30 or seven. It, it's amazing how that can just sort of screw up the rest of the day. Yeah. I totally get that. It's, yeah. it's really like starting off your mind feeling that you have a little bit of a head start. Um, I'm usually up at five and considering like the amount of things that I have to train each day just to move forward on, like teaching myself to sing from scratch, to songwrite from scratch, all of those mm -hmm. things. It takes a while. And when this time change happened right. and I, I didn't even realize it was four o'clock when I woke up cause my alarm didn't change. Oh. Um, I, it was like, I, I, I started sticking at 4am for about a week. Um, and it was like incredible. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I have so much time, oh my you know, God. but, but then you have to go to bed at, you know, eight or 9pm. So yeah, no you gotta, find, to do that. gotta find that balance, right? Cause you, you want to sort of stay consistent with when you go to sleep and when you wake up, but yeah. you also got to value how much time you need to sleep. Cause obviously I talk about like these principles. I mean, sleep is like number one on the list. Uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to principles for health. Um, and speaking of health, why don't we get into a little bit uh, the PE diet? I know you have that book with Dr. Ted Na Na Naiman, if I said that right. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And that's mainly like protein energy. I know you're, you're a big proponent of protein, obviously um, mm -hmm. backing up the carnivore movement a little bit, right? Yeah. What's the basis behind that book? Yeah. So the, the PE diet book, PE stands for protein to energy ratio. Mm -hmm. And the book really focuses on what are the most simple and effective practices that the everyday person could put into, pre could put into, um, could put to use mm -hmm. that will have the biggest impact on their body composition, on their, you know, all of their biomarkers, um, on longevity, things like that. So Dr. Ted Naiman really became well known for these awesome, awesome infographics and memes that he would post on Twitter that would take usually pretty complex topics that people could write, you know, pages on, and he would condense it into one picture or one graphic. And there would just be a, a blunt statement right at the top of it that it's, it's almost like the answer key, you mm -hmm. know? So instead of having to go through all of this information and hypothesizing, he would just tell you right here, um, eat this to lose fat as fast as possible or something like that. Right. And it, it would be so simple and it would make sense. And he would, he would be able to explain it and back it up. Um, and he had so many of these graphics that I always thought, man, I would love if he wrote a book, like that would be my go-to book. I would just read that in terms of, you know, training and, and nutrition and all of that. Right. So the book wasn't coming. <laughs> so I, at, at some point I reached out and um, I kind of pitched the idea of collaborating on a book and getting that out there. So the PE diet, ultimately there's three really simple phases to it. Um, one of them is incorporating a fasting window into your day. Uh, we just really simply advocate a 16, eight style of eating um, or just doing about two meals a day, skipping breakfast, keeping it very, very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is, to focus on fat loss, we don't really talk about restricting calories or um, tracking all of these different macros, just simply prioritizing protein, decreasing added carbs and fats. It is almost an evolution of the keto style of eating. A lot of us came from a low carb, high fat style of eating. 
-hmm. it just prioritizes protein a bit more than that style would mm -hmm. and reduces added fats a bit. So rather than adding, you know, a bunch of macadamia nuts or a bunch of grass fed butter to your food or avocados, we would say, you know, eat more pasture raised eggs, eat more grass fed beef, eat more wild caught salmon. So really focusing on the protein mineral side of things. And then the third aspect would be just a simple, simple um, high intensity body weight training program that takes 15 minutes a day, one set to failure on a pushing movement, a pulling movement and a leg movement. Mm. And with 15 minutes a day, the idea really is to just take everyone's excuses away. Right. This is a program that Dr. Ted Naiman has used daily for years now and, and he's ripped and it only takes 15 minutes, takes barely any equipment. Um, so that's, that's kind of the training side of things, but yeah, just three simple practices. And the goal is to just make it accessible for people. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to take, um, you know, this complex situation and hiring personal trainers and tracking all of these different foods. Um, just keeping things simple and effective, kind of focusing on that 80, 20 principle. Yeah. I like that. I mean, I always talk about when you confuse people, they don't take action. And, yeah. um, so, you know, keeping things simple and, I like the idea behind that. I actually came out with, I got into intermittent fasting actually from a client of mine because I do some training and health coaching and mm -hmm. uh, she had, she was pre-diabetic, she had some issues. She got into fasting, had unbelievable results. I'm like, you know, I got to look into this. Like, I don't know that much about it, even though it is sort of simple when you break it down. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I got into that and I was like, wow, I had great results. And I was like, you know, I'm going to come out with a journal and I came out with this simple intermittent fasting journal, uh, just to, like you said, like, keep it simple. And, you know, you, you promote more or less like the 16, eight, which is, you know, which mm -hmm. is the one, the, probably the more most popular way of, of doing intermittent fasting. Um, and that's what I sort of did in that journal is I had them actually push back breakfast gradually, not just jump right into it. Cause some people, it can be very difficult to get into, yeah. um, you know, the whole fasting window. Is that typically what you do for you? 16, eight? Um, these days, honestly, I don't really track what the window would be. I'm, I'm really just pushing my first meal until about 10, 10 AM. Yeah. Um, and then second meal would probably be at the end of the work day. So that would be about like 7 PM. Um, so no, not 16, eight. Um, but I'm, oh. I'm really not trying to get any leaner at this point. Like I, I'm not, I, I don't really want to be any leaner. I'm, I'm really happy with where my physique's at the the main focus is really just building strength over time. Right. And again, yeah, that's a good point because, um, it just, it depends on your goals, right? Like, yeah. um, you know, you're 25 years old and you're in great shape and you don't really need to have these big fasting windows. You're in more of a growth mode. So mm -hmm. I totally get that. And I've, I think the key for anyone is just, um, eliminate a lot of the snacking. And even mm -hmm. if you're having three meals a day, have a good satiating meal, like the, the, you know, grass fed meats and the wild salmon and the egg rolls and yeah. things like that. And then, you know, just go from meal to meal. If it's four or five hours, that's great. And if you're not happy where you're at and you, and you want to sort of lean out more then obviously adjust your fasting window. Yeah. And I think one of the beautiful things about it is that you can actually eat to satiety when you're eating the right foods. That's one of the things that we really promote with people the concept of you don't have to artificially restrict yourself at a certain point. You can actually start to trust your own satiety signals over time when you're feeding yourselves, when you're feeding yourself these very nutrient dense, high protein to energy ratio foods full of minerals, you know, full of B vitamins and fat soluble nutrients. So that's what we're really trying to promote. When you, when you give yourself foods like that, like one of the graphics in the book is um, I think it's like, 400 calories of salmon and 400 calories of a donut. And it says eat, you know, if you eat one of these, which one is going to make you hungry in two hours. So it's, it's that sort of concept. Not all calories are equal. Um, and, and we're really trying to prioritize the best ones. I completely agree. And, um, why don't we talk a little bit about the challenge? Because I have a challenge. Mm -hmm. I have a 21 day intermittent fasting challenge. And you have a 21 day, I was looking at it. It's pretty cool. I might have to give that a go. 21 day carnivore shred.com. Um, how did you get into carnivore? I know you've had sort of an evolution of the way you've 
um, gone from plant-based all the way to that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did uh, a plant-based whole foods, plant-based diet three years in college. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it checked a few boxes off for me. Um, but it started to raise a lot of huge issues in terms of energy, in terms of digestion, um, and mental focus as well. So I transitioned into a keto diet. It was about 2017 when I got into keto. Um, I did strict keto for six months. Um, no refeeds, nothing like that. And I did a keto diet. I continued that for about a year. I was really happy with the way I felt. Um, digestion was great. Energy was great. Mental focus was great. Body composition was the only thing that I just could not nail down. And I was, I was doing a lot of fasting. I was trying different styles of training. Um, but I, it seemed like I was actually holding on to more body fat than I ever had. And that was pretty much when, when, you know, enter Dr. Ted Naiman's work, um, which kind of coincided for me with the growth of the carnivore movement. Um, and this was kind of right at the cusp of the carnivore diet starting out and in 2018, starting to come to prominence. So I really combined those two approaches. I just cut out any extra plant foods and I focused my diet around beef, eggs, seafood, um, a little bit of you know, Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. And I just focused my diet on those foods. I incorporated some fasting and I would keep the protein up there. The fat was moderate, carbs were low. Mm -hmm. When I did that style of dieting, it was like every box was finally checked off. Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't really seeking anything else. I was, I was lean, I was strong, mental focus was great, digestion was great. And I was just pretty happy with things. Um, my you know, 10 year long diet journey that started when I was 13 kind of came to a close. And that's still essentially the style of dieting that I follow to this day. That's the foundation of it. Um, if I'm really, really focused on a, on like bulking, I'll bring in, you know, certain carbs, I'll bring in things like potatoes and sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, but I always kind of make sure that I've got my two pounds of red meat, my six eggs, and maybe a bit of seafood or a bit of dairy that day. Um, and then if I want to cut down, I'll just cut out those carbs. So that's, that's really kind of where my diet got to. And I thought I would never stop searching for the perfect diet, but there is an answer for all of us. <laughs> I, I do think that each of us has that specific answer for our goals. And I'm, I'm glad that I found mine. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone is on that journey. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people are on that journey to find like what's optimal for them. Um, yeah. I was sort of the same way in a sense. I was fairly more plant-based, pescatarian-like. Um, I used to have these big salads and I used to try to find yeah. you know, at least decent veggie burgers from time to time. I used to find, yeah. find I probably tried like every brand <laughs> that's oh, yeah. out there. Yeah, right. I'm sure in California, there's probably even more than in, there are in Chicago. Um, yeah. But, you know, yeah, I was sort of the same way. I actually got more into, I would say, keto slash carnivore-ish. Um, the beginning of the year, probably right around the quarantine. Um, and I started going more into meat and it was amazing. Just energy. My workouts were better. My body looked better. It was like, I was just lacking that protein. And, um, and I'm sure obviously, you know, we, you know, as you talked already, how, how important that is for just growth in general. Um, and then yeah. you know, when you, when you want quality protein, um, there's no way getting around really, um, an animal based, you know, if you could do, do like a grass fed, grass finished. And I found a few companies, um, you know, that I'm sure are, were, were killing it during the quarantine because people were ordering a lot of food. And I, I, yeah, I got a bunch of different grass fed, grass finished meats and blends. You know, you talk about uh, organ meats as well. Um, do you incorporate organ meats into your um, routine? Not these days. <laughs> um, I'll... <laughs> I'll do, uh, I have a bunch of optimal carnivore and ancestral supplements in yeah. my cabinet and I'll do that pretty much every day. Um, I kind of mix and match. Are you taking bread? <laughs> I, I, I was yeah. taking mofo for a while okay. until I ran out of it. Um, it's a fantastic product. When I checked the ingredients, I was a little shocked. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there, there are bull testicles as a part of this product, which mm -hmm. there are ancestral reasons for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was, I was taking that one for a while as well. So I'll usually take those every day. I used to do liver pretty often. Um, I just, 
can't really get myself to do it anymore. Um, in, yeah. in terms of priority priorities, it's not number one on the list. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. I, I, I've gotten most of my organ meats through blends. You know, a lot of these companies mm-hmm. are making blends and, uh, and that I find that's a good way to do it. Um, and mix yeah. it up with that and just, you know, steaks and things like that and do the fish, you know, wild salmon and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I've gone on a similar journey as you, as far as getting to, to more of a meat-based diet. And as long as they can find a company that does it right and sustainable and, um, treats the animals humane, um, I'm all for that, you know? Um, yeah. so what I also noticed, um, you're into different martial arts or you were in a martial arts. I noticed one thing that, that stood out was arm wrestling. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah arm wrestling. Yeah. yeah. I, I was heavily, heavily obsessed with arm wrestling from when I was 13 to 18. Yeah. Um, people don't know that this is a competitive sport and there are tournaments and there are all kinds of, you know, weight divisions and you have local tournaments and, and state tournaments and uh, national championships. Uh, there are international championships. So yes, there are world champions of arm wrestling. Yeah. Um, there they're are a TV. few arm. Yeah. They're on TV yeah. sometimes. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, they, they actually had it on ESPN for a little while, the uh, World Arm Wrestling League. Right. Um, there are certain arm wrestlers that are that that have kind of dominated the sport for decades. Um, probably the most well known one is John Berzink, who from nineteen I think eighty five up until about up until about twenty ten, he dominated the sport of arm wrestling. Was very rarely beat. Traveled the world. The guy was only about two hundred ten pounds. Um, and just dominated the sport. So it's really, really fun. It's, it's very addicting. I, I feel the same way about it that I think a lot of people feel about jujitsu. Mm. They always say like, once you start and you get with a good team of guys and you're training it, um, it's just addictive. And yeah, I, I was definitely addicted to it. R- right around when I started to get serious about my career, that's when I said, okay, you've, you've spent enough mental energy on this sport. Uh, let's stop doing that. <laughs> hey, well, there could be worse addictions, right? That's true. Um, I've, you know, speaking of martial arts, like Muay Thai is something that's been a passion of mine. I've done it on and off for a while now. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, I just like it. I don't know. I'm not a big, I don't know how are you are. I'm not a big cardio guy. And that was like my one Mm -hmm. way to get out there and just like do something like that would really kick my butt and I'd be sweating like crazy. And, you know, so, and then also obviously you talk about resistance training. Um, have you been working out from home or are you going to the studio or what have you been doing? Um, you know, with the whole quarantine or, yeah. Yeah. So at the beginning of it, I was doing a lot of calisthenics at the park, um, which was great in terms of getting sunshine and and also fresh air. And, um, I was doing a lot of, you know, pull-ups and sprints and jump squats and muscle ups and push ups and dips and things like that, which, are good and you get conditioned, but they're not really going to pack any serious size on you. I I had a weight vest as well that I was working with. I went up to 40 pounds. So I was still getting good workouts in. Um, Halfway through the year, gyms open back up. There's a lot of different kind of safety procedures that you got to do when you go in there. But um, yeah, so gyms, gyms are open again. So I do go to the gym uh, every day now. And uh, thank God (laughs) I, (laughs) It's just, I, I've been going to the gym since I was about 13. And, and to me at this point, it's just a place that I love. Like there's, mm. there's few feelings as fun as getting to the gym at six in the morning and you got your music playing and you just go intense. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I love it. I love it. Now. And, and I'm the same way I've been, well, I've been lifting since I was like a junior in high school. Um, mm-hmm. so it's been, a, it's been, you know, over 20 years, what I recently yeah. found over the last, let's just say six months is I've been getting more into like resistant bands. Um, mm. I was having some joint issues with my elbow, even with my knee. And um, not that I'm going to, you know, want to, but, but to promote like the X3, I was using that. For, mm-hmm. I've been using that and incorporating that. And that's really like, it was, it was fun to just mix it up and do something different. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've tried any resistant band things, but I know yeah. you're, you know, you're only 25 when you get a little bit older, it's like, you want to get a hard workout in, but you don't, you don't want it to cash out your joints and be sore for the next. No, I know. hear you. Yeah. So you'll, yeah, you'll get no, there. 
<laughs> I've I've definitely tried a lot of different styles of lifting over the years. Yeah. Um, I've I've had periods of time where it was bodybuilding focused hypertrophy. I've done powerlifting. I competed in powerlifting for a little bit. Yeah. I did a lot of Olympic lifting for a while. Um, the heavy compound lifts. Um, and then I've also done, you know, periods where it was like six months of just straight calisthenics. Mm. Um, so I've, I've tried a lot of different things. Honestly, I feel physically, I feel the best when I just do calisthenics mm. because it's, it's so little pressure on your joints. Right. Um, you feel fantastic, but you know, uh, aesthetically, it's not nearly as appealing in my opinion. <laughs> so I, I always kind of go back to the weights and I do enjoy the weights a lot. Um, and I'm, I'm all for switching it up. Like what I'm doing currently is I'm not programming anything for myself. So I, I have this app called FitBod. Right. I've and FitBod. You, yeah. Yeah. The FitBod app. So you can just customize it to what your goals are, which exercises you can exclude certain exercises. Um, you can set how long you want to be working out for. Hmm. And it's, it's got some AI technology in there where it'll basically just give you that progressive overload each workout. So it'll take you up, you know, a few extra reps or um, a few extra pounds, which I really like. I like having another brain thinking about my workouts mm -hmm. and I can just show up, turn the app on. It'll tell me what I'm doing for the day. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with that. And the cool thing about it is that it'll get you to do a lot of exercises that you otherwise wouldn't really do. Um, you know, a lot of times when we program ourselves, we'll kind of focus on the same things a lot. This thing has me doing, you know, a lot of different exercises that I generally wouldn't do, which is providing so much different stimulus to the body that I like it. I really enjoy it. That's cool. Yeah, I've heard you talk about that in the past. Um, yeah, it is amazing with all these apps. It's like meditation, you know, yeah. sleep, anything you need around, you know, goal setting. It's like really unbelievable. There's really no reason to not, you know, you know, take advantage of those things and use them to your advantage. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, talked about your eating routine. What about like, if you were going to cheat, <laughs> if you're going to have a cheat. Oh, yeah. Routine, yeah. Um, is there something that you would like? Yeah, no, th there's a routine for that. It's usually <laughs> every, every Sunday. Yeah. Um, I'll, there's I'll a routine have around cheat, cheat foods. There you go. Yeah. Can you believe that? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, like, that's, that's a topic that gets talked about in a lot of different ways in, in our community, you know, whether it's paleo, ancestral, keto, carnivore. Um, I personally am all for it. I think that yeah. if your body can handle it, then go for it. And I think it can be a lot of fun. It's a nice mental break. It's a nice physical break. Um, generally, the inflammation you uh, incur from that one day of eating, right. it ain't that bad, especially if you're fasting the next day and your body's kind of a finely tuned machine. Right. So um, I'm all for it. And usually what I like to do is each Sunday, I'll kind of take that one day after, after 12 p.m., not going to do any work, um, and I'll pretty much just enjoy my day. Right. Uh, what I like to do is try ethnic cuisines. So mm. I'll go to um, – I had Ethiopian food recently. I'll go to – maybe uh, like a Japanese spot or I'll go to um, an Indian food spot and mm -hmm. just try stuff like that. And I, there's no rules on cheat day. Like I'm not trying to, you know, well, I'll have a little bit more sweet potatoes than usual. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, if I want to have Ben and Jerry's, I'll have it. So right. um, yeah, I, I just kind of let loose on that day. And then next day I'm back on it. Right. And that's the most important thing is like, there's nothing wrong with doing a cheat day as long as you just get back on your schedule. Um, and I know Brad loves to call these celebratory days. And I, I always like to, I always joke when people do that and they'll say, no, it's not a cheat. That's, that has a negative connotation to it. It's celebratory or if it's, it's a refeed. And I always say like, it's a cheat day. <laughs> you know, let's, let's not, let's not make it sound like a good thing. Like, you know, otherwise you might end up having too many of these. <laughs> right. Yeah. Call it what you want, but you know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with doing that. I think it's sort of a reward totally. that I, I got into because I'm, you know, I've been fasting is I'll do like longer fasts and then, you know, it's, it's nice to sort of reward yourself with that meal and just break the fast with a good meal. Um, Definitely. yeah, I think that's like, for me that, you know, when you, when you eat one or two meals a day, like yourself, like you really want to eat good meals and satiating meals. Um, and then, you know, if you have a cheat day every once in a while, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what about, um, you talk about mindset. I know I'm going all over the place here, but favorite book, no. 
Yeah. Favor- yeah. Yeah. Like I know you're big into books, 10 minutes a day. I'm a big fan. I actually just picked up a Wim Hof's book. Um, mm. do you do any, and speaking of that, do you do cold exposure or any hormetic stresses on your body? Yeah. Uh, my life is one big hormetic stressor. <laughs> oh. Um, no, yeah, I, I definitely like to do that. So every morning, well, I'm not going to say every morning, but right. most mornings I like to do a cold shower. If I'm like super sleep deprived and, and stressed out to begin with, I'm not going to do it because right. I'm not trying to just, you know, stress right. myself out like crazy. Right. But most of the time I'm doing a cold shower. Um, there's two things I love about it. One is how much it energizes you, how amazing you feel after a cold shower. And then the second one is what it does for your mood. Um, you know, there's a lot of great information out there about how, you know, I think it's a flood of dopamine that you get after that, but, um, and people have experienced like temporary, how would you say this? It's not a cure for depression, but it's like a temporary way to upregulate some of those feel good hormones. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a way to help people get that dark cloud out from them, you know, for, uh, maybe an hour or two. Um, so I I really like it because I feel like it's a great way to start your morning off in a positive way. Right. Um, and then jumping back to the reading. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so many books that I, I enjoy reading. What I tend to do is I tend to read a lot of the books that I love over and over and over again, because I'm really trying to ingrain them into my mind. And there's a few of those, um, like the compound effect, the miracle morning, um, let's say the seven habits of highly effective people, uh, think and grow rich is one that I like to read often. Um, the science of getting rich is a fantastic book. Uh, the richest man in Babylon is one. Um, I feel like every quarter I'll read Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography over again, because it just gets me pumped up. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a few that I like to read. I do try to bring in new books every now and then, but generally I kind of stick to a few basics and just read those on repeat. I actually, I like that because I'm sure that you notice going around and reading it again and a third time and a fourth time that you miss stuff and you didn't even gra- you know, yeah. you probably grasp what, like the first time you go through a book, what do you grasp? 20, 30% of what's really in it. Yeah. I think that there are certain times when you're more receptive to a certain message. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you read a book over and over again, different takeaways are going to hit you at times that you need them more so than other times. So I always like to do that. Just read these books constantly. And I feel like they're always giving you new information for new periods of life. And a lot of the times you can forget the stuff that you read. You can kind of fall out of practice with some of these things. So it's kind of a good reminder. Yeah. I have an issue sometimes where I, I like to buy books <laughs> and then, mm. you know, I, I like to buy. It's a I'll, good feeling. <laughs> it's a good, yeah. <laughs> it's a good feeling. It's cool. And you know, I'll read them, I'll get it, but sometimes I'll like, I'll get into them for a bit. And then I'm like, well, I think I maybe should try something else, but I like your idea. Maybe I'll just start reading them through and then over again. Um, just to, just to hammer at home, you know, especially if yeah. you enjoy the book. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about your challenge. Um, cause I have one as well. And, um, regarding the carnivore one, what's the, what's the basis mm-hmm. behind that one? Yeah. So the carnivore diet, um, the 21 day carnivore shred challenge, we're really combining both of the things that I I love about diet. So it's, it's high protein to energy ratio. It's also, you know, a carnivore style of eating. So we're really focusing on a a high protein, moderate fat, low carb style of eating. Um, Some people within the challenges will do intermittent fasting, uh, but it's not something that we require. You know, we, we tend to provide three meals a day and per- personalized macros to each participant. And also in terms of, you know, whether they do, have any issues with dairy. How do you yeah. do the personalized macros for each in- individual? Is it a quiz that they take or do you talk to them? on the Yes. Point? Okay. Yeah. So, so we usually go through a quiz and okay. we'll, we'll go through activity levels, things like that to determine what maintenance looks like. Mm-hmm. And then we stick to just a really simple one-to-one protein to fat. Um, that tends to, you know, you're getting a lot of protein. You're also getting a good amount of fat. If you're in a hypocaloric state to begin with, we don't really want to minimize the fat because that's going to be basically the only energy calories you're getting throughout the challenge, Mm -hmm. these fat calories, because protein's not really being burned, um, as, as a huge energy source. So we, we try to keep it one-to-one now 
the only thing that differentiates that from the PE diet is the PE diet. We're not setting, you know, a, a calorie limit. We're not really setting uh, specific macros. You're kind of eating to satiety. That's when high protein to energy ratio really comes into play. But with these 21 day challenges, since we are setting calories at a certain level, we can kind of do that one to one. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much how it works. And then each week throughout the three weeks, we like to do a personal development, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'd like to do mm-hmm. a personal development challenge at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the week. So it might be a 5 a.m. challenge. It might be a cold shower challenge. It might be a reading challenge, things like that. So challenges within the challenge. Yes. Yes. Cause it's, it's really all, um, the whole point of this is to be sustainable and for it to be a, a lifestyle change for people right. and just targeting the diet and the fitness is good. But if we can also start to incorporate more structure in life, um, which comes with the early morning wake-ups, which comes with a meditation challenge or reading challenge, then that just improves on all aspects. So yeah, I, I, I'm a huge fan of that. And as far as protein is concerned, what, um, I know if you probably hear from five different people, five different answers, but how much protein would you say that you aim for maybe yourself or even the individuals in the challenge. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so with individuals in the challenge, usually let's say we're doing one to one, depending on what their calories are. I, I do like the idea of having people at about one gram per pound of desired body weight. You can go off of lean mass. You can go off of total body weight. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're looking at what's your desired body weight, where are you trying to get uh, one gram per pound of that? I like that. Whether you're bulking or cutting, I, I really like that. And I think it's simple. Um, for me personally, I really don't track anything these days. So I would guess that I'm over 200 grams of protein a day. Um, I, I weigh about 160. I'm doing about two pounds of red meat a day um, through New York steaks. I'm doing... Greek yogurt. I do a bit of whey protein isolate. I do six eggs a day. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I'll incorporate things like oysters and stuff like that. Anyways, we're back. We cut out for a second. Um, No, I hear so about one gram per pound of body weight uh, for protein. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And I think you can adjust it depending on the individual per se. And if they're in more Mm -hmm. of a growth mode or, you know, for example, if, if they, if they want to, you know, maybe cut back a little bit, not be in a growth mode and they're fasting more. They probably don't need as much per se. One of the interesting things is I've, I've seen so many different studies on protein and when yeah. you're in a, in a bulking mode, sometimes minimizing protein can actually be really helpful. Protein's mm-hmm. extremely satiating, but it's not going to fill your muscle glycogen out the way that, you know, carbs would. Um, it's, it's not really going to provide an energy calorie source. And let's say you're training hard, you're trying to bulk up, um, and you're in a surplus, if all of those calories are coming from protein, we've seen from protein overfeeding studies that um, your metabolism's ramped up and, and you're just burning through those calories. And some people even lose, they'll lose body fat in a protein overfeeding study. So going super high protein, if you're trying to bulk, sometimes can work against you. And you might want to replace some of those protein calories with some carbs or fats. Um, Stan Efferding has a lot of cool information on that. But for me, just for simplicity's sake, like these days, it's really set it and forget it. So I just always focus on a protein goal each day. Mm-hmm. And if I'm cutting, then I only hit the protein goal. If I'm bulking, then I'll hit the protein goal and then have some extra food on top of that. Right. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. Like you mentioned the carbs. And I know you like to mm-hmm. sort of backload your carbs to help us sleep. Yeah. yeah. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, partially to help with sleep because we are getting into that that parasympathetic state when we're having those carbs at night um but for me really it's to minimize damage <laughs> like if if you're having carbs early in the day then who knows what oh. you might just keep having carbs so to me it's like it's just simpler if i tell myself okay mm-hmm. you're bulking yes but you got to hit your protein goal first and it, when you hit that then you can have some carbs if you still want them at the end of the day it's kind of like a, a safety mechanism for me. Yeah, I agree. For, for me, I, I do the same thing. If I, if I break my fast, let's just say typically around one or two o'clock, I'll, I'll stick to like 
higher, a little more higher protein, moderate fat, almost like no mm-hmm. carb, maybe a little bit of carb. Cause I've just no, I noticed even before when I got, before I got into, you know, eating meat and things like that, I would yeah. have this big salad in the middle of the day and you're thinking, Oh, this is, this is fine. But like, I felt it, I could feel a difference. Yeah. And, and like, you know, you don't want to feel like you've got to take a, even though there's nothing wrong with a power nap. I didn't, I didn't really like that feeling of, of yeah. you know, like thinking I have to take one. Um, so like, for example, today I just had eggs and, um, a little bit of uh, salmon and a little bit of cottage cheese. And, um, I really, you know, I'm actually, I actually have a CGM right now. I don't know if you've ever done continuous glucose monitor, but it's interesting to see how different foods impact me. Um, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and it didn't really affect it much at all. So I think that's important to just keep those insulin levels, you know, at a baseline throughout the day. And then if you want to have a little more carbs, have it towards the end of the day, not too late, obviously you don't want to have it too close to when you're going to sleep, but mm-hmm. if you could have it three, four hours before you go to sleep, um, like you, for example, I know you like sweet potato every once in a while and things like that. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I I totally agree with that. And it's just nice. It's a nice mental benefit to know throughout the day that you're, you're, you're not having carbs. So when you're not having carbs, you're in ketosis, your mind is kind of at its best. Um, You're in a bit of that sympathetic nervous system state because you're eating a little bit lighter. Um, I I like knowing that mentally. So I just know that I'm at my best throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, when I have the carbs, it almost kind of signals to my brain, like, all right, we're, we're kind of done for the day. (laughs) Yeah. Time to shut it off. Yes. Um, and I, and I wanted to, uh, we're going to wrap up, but I wanted to ask you, uh, one last couple of last questions. One was, uh, since this podcast is based around aiming, you know, for individuals who are, you know, middle-aged looking to get their body backs, uh, you're not quite middle-aged yet, but what's one tip, <laughs> but you have lots of good, you have lots of good tips. So what's like one tip you'd, you'd give a middle-aged individual that wanted to get their body or even their mind back to what it once was. Oh boy. What a great question. Um, so if, if you're middle-aged, let's say you're in your, uh, forties, fifties, and you want to get your body and your mindset back to where it was, I would, I would give like a few really, really simple recommendations. So the first one would be implement some intermittent fasting, implement some style of training that you can do on a daily basis. You don't have to be going crazy on a daily basis, but there's something mentally about kind of checking in with that training uh, every single day. It's going to keep your body limber. It's going to help with mobility. And if you're training daily, then you'll have time kind of for all the different aspects you need, the strength training, the stretching, the, you know, if you want to do some cardio core work. Um, So I like that a daily training practice, a daily fasting uh, practice, and then a style of eating similar to what we talked about. If you can base it around high quality animal proteins, um, I I always kind of prefer red meat, pasture raised eggs, maybe some wild caught seafood, maybe some uh, grass fed dairy. If you can base your diet around that, and then on top of that, if you want to add in a few greens, if you want to add in some berries, if you want to add in a little bit of fruit, that's fantastic. Um, So those three things, and I would really say in terms of eating, don't try to lose all the fat at once. Don't try to set like a really crazy calorie deficit. You're going to kind of burn out mentally and physically. Just allow yourself to eat to satiety with those foods. If you're doing that and training and doing some fasting, Um, you're going to start to trend in the right direction. And then the last thing mindset wise, Ooh, it's a toss up, but I would, I would say get a good book on goal setting. Um, one that I would highly, highly recommend is by a lady named Honoré Cordaire and it's called, um, vision to reality short term. I think it's how short term massive action leads to long term maximum results. And it's just an excellent, excellent book on quarterly setting quarterly goals that basically her hypothesis is that you can achieve your yearly goals many times within about a hundred days. If you're actually focused on it and you're Mm -hmm. taking a lot of short-term massive action, um, these, these yearly goals, sometimes a year is so far out that Mm -hmm. you'll see this happen with a lot of people in, in October. (laughs) <laughs> they start to realize, holy crap, I'm not going to hit my yearly goals. Mm-hmm. And they might try to sprint towards the finish line, but 
they could have done that in January just as, just as well. So right. I think that's a fantastic book. Um, that lose 20 pounds this year goal, you could probably do it in 100 days if you're focused on what you're doing. Um, you know, that uh, finally take a course in whatever skill it happens to be, you could probably do it in one quarter. So I think that book is fantastic to just kind of get you on track and get that feed, uh, get that feeling of momentum, of speed, of motivation, of getting zoned in, getting lasered in. Because when your motivation's on track and when you've got really clear goals, it, it just flips a switch in your mind. You feel unstoppable. You feel ready to go. You feel ready to take on these different challenges. Um, and then you combine that with a great, you know, exercise program, a great diet program, like you're in fighting shape. So Th those would be my best recommendations. Yeah. A lot of good things. And I agree. I got to get that mindset, right? It's called vision to reality. Is that the name of the book? Yeah. Vision to reality, how short-term massive action leads to long-term maximum results by Honoré Cordaire. Okay. I'll have to put a, uh, a link in the show notes for that one. Um, and if you use discount code, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't no, have that's any. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Discount code 21 day carnivore. Yeah. yeah. I won't, won't do anything. <laughs> um, well, this was great. A ton of actionable tips. Um, it was really nice meeting you. And um, I think our viewers and listeners will get a ton of value from all this. Where's the best place? I know you have a few sites, but where would be the best place to find you and learn what you're no doing next? Yeah, I, I really funnel everything through my Instagram. So okay. um, just Instagram at William Schufelt, um, S-H-E-W-F-E-L-T. Okay. And that is where I, you know, I'm posting about diet training stuff. Um, so that's, that's for one audience. And then I've also got my music stuff on there. I've also got a few acting projects I'm working on currently. So I promote that on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the 21 Day Carnivore Shred Challenges, we promote those on there. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the, where I put everything. Okay. So William Schufeld's Instagram, I'll put a, a link for that as well. Um, all right. Well, thanks so much for coming on and sharing all your knowledge and insight at such a young age. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate having, having you on and um, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Awesome. You too, man. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I understand there are millions of other podcasts out there and you've chosen to listen to mine, and I appreciate that. Check out the show notes at briangrin.com for everything that was mentioned in this episode. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast and share it with a friend or family member that's looking to get their body back to what it once was. Thanks again and have a great day.